Well, today I get to talk about my favorite lens. It's not the lens that I use the most inside the studio or on assignments for the studio, but it's the lens that I use the most when I'm out taking my wildlife photography. And that is my Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. All right, so this lens was a long time coming to my studio or to my camera bag. And the main reason being is, is because I actually had my eyes on the Canon 600 F4. Now I was saving for years for that lens. I really liked that lens. I liked what it could do. I liked the aperture on it. I, I liked the, how sharp it was. The thing I didn't like about it was how heavy it was. And once I got sick with a lung issue that caused it to be almost out of my range for carrying because it was so heavy, I decided that it was not going to be worthwhile for me to buy it. I had saved up enough money to buy it. I was all ready to buy it, but I just, just could not justify it because of how heavy it was. So I found the Sigma actually the 150 to 500. And after looking at it for a while, I ended up buying that. And I loved that lens. It was an amazing lens. Then the Sigma came out with the 150 to 600. And when I saw the 150 to 600, that extra 100 millimeters was amazing. And actually it came out to be an extra 160 millimeters because the camera that I use it on is a crop sensor. And when I saw that extra um, zoom that it had, I decided that I had to get it. So I immediately sold my 150 to 600 to a friend of mine and I bought this lens. Well, that was a mistake. When I started shooting with this lens, I was not happy. It was not sharp. It was not clear. It just, it was not a good lens in my opinion. I was sad that I'd gotten rid of the 150 to 500. After shooting with it for a number of months, uh, one January, it was really cold and I decided that that's it. I'm at the studio anyways. I'm going to bring it to work and I'm going to start testing it. I'm going to use the micro focus fine adjustment on the camera. I'm going to use the dock I brought for it so that I could adjust the lens and I'm going to get this lens to work. Well, it actually took me two weeks of adjustments to it. Now, did I need all those two weeks? No, the first few days I actually got it down so it was pretty good but then I tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it. Now this camera and this lens combination is amazingly sharp and I love this lens. If I was to get another lens or if I was going to replace this lens with anything, I would wait until somebody came out with a 200 to 800 or a 300 to 800, something in that range that was more readily available than what's out there now. But otherwise, this lens is my favorite lens for when I go out now and take my wildlife photography. It's not that heavy of a lens. It, it does have some weight to it. When it's extended, it is actually quite long. Um, so there is a little bit more balance when it's extended than when it's all rolled in. Um, it's a very sharp lens. I, I find that it's amazing. In fact, I put this up against the Canon 600 F4 and I find that this is as good as the 600. So to, for that, I am really happy. Considering what the price of it is, I'm even happier because if something should happen and I did break this lens, I can actually buy a number of these lenses before I even pay the entire cost on a Canon 600, let alone the actual weight difference as well. And this lens to me is a superb lens. Now I did look at the Tamron and I, I used to shoot a lot with Tamron. The last one I had from them, I wasn't overly impressed and I heard a lot more good reports on this lens than the Tamron 150 to 600. So I ended up buying this lens instead. It has what most lenses have on it. It has a manual focus setting. It also has the autofocus setting. This one actually also has what's called an MO setting. So that's where you can focus it and then you can tweak it so that if you didn't get it quite sharp enough when you focused it using autofocus, you can tweak it just a little bit by just adjusting it here when it's on that setting. 
I don't use that. What I've actually done with this lens, because this camera is dedicated to this lens, I actually went through and removed the focus from the shutter and moved the focus to back button focus. This is the only camera I do that on. And I find with having it on the back button focus, I can focus on my subject, then I can recompose and shoot. And if I do need to tweak the focus, I can just hit this button on the back, refocus it, and I don't have to worry about adjusting it. Now I have used it, but it's just, it's one of those things that it just, I, I don't find it necessary for how I shoot. It does have the distance scale in it, which again is a great thing. I love having the distance scale. I don't know why more lenses just don't have it other than most people today probably don't know how to use that. It has image stabilizing on it. So it actually has uh, three settings off image stabilizing one and image stabilizing two. Now I only use image stabilizing one on this lens. The difference being is number two is for panning. So it's supposed to be able to keep the camera more stable or keep the lens more stable when you're doing panning. I have tried it, all the different suggestions that Sigma's had and people online have had, and I don't find it has enough of a difference to make it worthwhile. So I don't use that setting on here. I just use image stabilizing one. One thing that I don't do is I've never taken off the image stabilizing. I've never shut it off on this camera, even when on a tripod. Because it's such a big lens, because it's such a long lens, I find that even in our little bit of wind that we get down here, and today there's a lot of wind, believe me, um, but even in a little bit of wind, this thing shakes. So I leave the image stabilizing on at all times. Now, it also has two other settings on it that many lenses don't have. The first is a distance scale. And what that does is you have three settings on it. So you have the whole lens, so from 2.8 meters to infinity. So you can set it to there. You have uh, 10 meters to infinity. So you can set it to there. And then you have 2.8 meters to 10 meters. And what it does is it eliminates different areas so the lens isn't taking so long to focus. If you're focusing something that's in the distance, it's gonna be close to infinity, there's no sense having this lens dial itself all the way to the closest setting and then have it go all the way back to infinity. It takes too long being a big lens. So that's one setting they put on that I really like. Now, do I use it? Usually I keep it on full unless I'm shooting birds that I know are going to be far enough away. Then I will change it if I'm shooting different birds that are flying because it stops that hunting. It stops that, <laughs> I finally got it, okay, good. And it eliminates a lot of that. Otherwise, I really don't adjust it very much. I use this lens from as close as it will a focus, which is 2.8 meters, all the way to infinity. Just about every day I go out for different things. I'll shoot spiders with this, I'll shoot flowers with this, I'll shoot a bear with this, I'll shoot a moose, I'll shoot a elk, a coyote, a wolf, whatever it is, this lens seems to be doing it. So I usually leave it on full so it has the whole range. But again, unless I know something is in the distance and it's not gonna get any closer, then I'll adjust it. The other setting it has, which many lenses do not have, this is a, well, I know it's a Sigma thing. I think it's also maybe a Tamron thing, but I don't think Canon offers it. And that is a custom function button. And it has off, custom function one, and custom function two. And what that is for is that is so when you hook this lens up to the dock, and then you hook the dock up to your computer, you can actually go in and set different features and functions on this lens to make it work differently. So one setting may be super fast autofocus, but less accurate. And another setting may be more accurate autofocus, but slower. So you can set up whatever you want and program this lens for that. 
Again, I don't find there's enough of a reason for me to do it. Maybe if I was on the road every day using this lens and using it for different situations where they're majorly different, I would set that up. But I don't find it something that I really use a lot. I have done it. I have set it up and I just forgot what the custom functions were and ended up shutting it off and going back to the normal. And it works just fine. Another feature that this lens has is it has a lock. So that stops the lens from coming out while you're traveling or you're carrying it. Very seldom do I use that because usually just when I want to zoom out is when I forget that I had it locked and then I go to zoom out and I can't figure out why it's not zooming out. So I seldom use that. One of the big things with this lens that's really cool is the foot. And I use the foot a lot, whether it's for me holding the lens and I will actually put it and rest it in my palm and then I will hold the lens so that I can zoom in and out with this hand. If I want to, I can adjust focus here. And I use the uh, tripod foot a lot on this lens. Funny thing is, I don't mount this lens on a tripod very often. I find with bigger lenses, when I'm tracking subjects, a tripod slows me down too much. Even if you have a gimbal head and all the other fancy stuff on your tripod, I find it just slows down. Whereas with this, I can take it, I can focus, I can go over, I can go up, I can go down. So much easier. I do use a monopod for this quite often. And again, in Southern Alberta winds, <laughs> anything to stabilize it is better than nothing. And I find on a monopod, long days of shooting, it stops you from carrying the weight of the lens. Not necessarily that it stabilizes it more, or makes it sharper or helps any other way, but it just takes that weight off. I also have a bean bag for my window of my vehicle. I also have a whole bunch of other stuff that I use with it, but 99.9% .9 I carry this and shoot it handheld and I love it. Now, little trick, and this is something that it's true with all lenses, but even more so with this lens I have found. This is a 5.6 to 6.3 lens, which means when it's at this zoom, which is 150, it's actually a 5.6. When I zoom out, the best aperture I can get on it is a 6.3. At both of those, 5.6 and 6.3, I find this lens very soft. So what I've done is I shoot it on aperture priority and I have my aperture set to F9 is the lowest that I go. I have found that F9 is the sweet spot with this lens and my pictures are so much better. I've actually had people come in and had the exact same lens and we've done work with it. I've taught them how to use it. I've gone in and helped them program it and adjust it and everything. And they come back and they say, well, it's a little bit better, but it's not a lot. So then I'll say, have you tried shooting it at F9? And they'll him and haw and they'll tell me all the reasons why they don't want to do it. Then they set it to F9 and they go, wow, what a difference it makes. And that's one thing I have found with this lens. If there's a bad spot on it now that I've got it all tweaked, it would be that it's really an F9 lens. I could shoot it a little bit lower, but it's it gets soft really fast. Now for the camera. I'm not going to talk a lot about the camera in this video, but I have to say that having a camera dedicated to this lens, you can do so much more with it. You can leave settings set on it. Like I said before, the back focus button on this camera, it's the only way this camera focuses. This camera's always on aperture priority. It's always on F9. So that helps me to go in the field and get better pictures with this combination. I am looking at upgrading this camera. I actually was waiting for the um, 7D3 to come out and Canon announced this year that that has been discontinued. So I'm going to pick up a 90D for this camera or for this lens and replace the 70D with it. But I really don't need it. So 
I'm not rushing out there. I'm going to wait until the 90 goes on sale. This combination gets me some amazing pictures. I have blown pictures from this lens and camera combination up to 24 by 36. And plus, at 24 by 36, I've even cropped quite a bit off of it. So I was probably closer to a 1200 millimeter lens when I finally printed the final image after I did the cropping. So I really, really like that. So if you're looking for a good lens, if you're looking for something to go out and bring your subjects in a lot closer, I highly recommend the Sigma 150 to 600. So until next time, get out there, enjoy the great outdoors, get some wonderful pictures. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye now. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, please click on the like button, which is the thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when any new videos are uploaded. Thank you and have a great day.